Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for February 15th, 2023. On today's word, if you're new here, what we do is we gather around the word of God on a daily basis. We have a community of believers that watch every morning live at 7 a.m. Eastern and others who watch throughout the day. And we are here to support one another, to pray for one another, and to build each other up. We call it the Grace Life family. And we're learning from the word of God how to live a life that is empowered by God's grace. By the grace of God, we are able to do what we could not do without God. Is God super on our natural, and God empowers us to become the men and women that he has called us to be. Right now, the Lord told me to start the year teaching a series on the miracles of Jesus. This is part 28 of the series. Today, we're going to deal with a situation where Jesus healed a paralyzed man, a paraplegic, but the paraplegic couldn't get to Jesus, so he needed friends. The title of today's message is, You Need Friends like this. Put in the chat, say, I need friends and I have friends that believe God with me, right? You need friends like this. I want you to open up your heart and get ready to receive what God is about to say. All right, so we need friends like this. Let's get ready for the word this morning. Before I get into the, the passage for the miracle, I've been sharing with you just about every day a verse that we're meditating on, Psalms 126 and verse four. The Bible says, now, Lord, do it again. Restore us to our former glory. Lord, do it again. There was a time in my life where I operated on another level as it relates to the passion and the zeal and the fervor and the fire. Lord, do it again. Put in the chat, Lord, do it again. Restore us to the former glory. And then the Bible says, not only take me back to the former glory, I'm saying take me to another level. And watch this, may streams of refreshing flow over us until every dry heart in our, in our area is drenched again. Every area of my heart, whatever area was dry, may it be drenched again. I was sharing with someone yesterday, I was having a conversation with one of you, and that person was sharing with me that there were some dry areas in, in their heart, and, and God is drenching those areas again. You know what it's like to just have, have you know, just kind of be dry, like where, where you're not there, like you, you, you the passion is gone, the zeal is gone, the joy is gone, but in this season, Say, Lord, do it again. You're going to get all of that back. I want you to get up every morning with a spring in your step, with a smile on your face, with a song in your heart, with a praise on your lips. This is your season. This is your time. This is a season of refreshing. This is a season of restoring for us. Say, Lord, do it again. All right. So now let's get into this miracle. Man, I tell you what, I love the miracles of Jesus. I'm getting so much feedback from you about this series and how this series is just causing people for their faith to be reignited and stirred up. Like like in uh, a, friend, a friend of mine says, man, this is the kind of stuff that make your baby leap. You know what I'm saying? When, when, when uh, Mary went to go see her cousin Elizabeth and uh, Mary walked through the threshold of Elizabeth's house, the Bible says that that her baby leaped in the womb. And say, I'm saying like, you, you may be pregnant with some promises. Come on, before I get into the miracle, let me just talk to you real quick. You may be pregnant with some promises and, and and you allowed 2022, you allowed from the pandemic to now some things to just go dry. And you you stop believing God like you were believing God. You stop having an expectation of manifestation. But in this series, as I'm teaching on the miracles of Jesus, every day I'm talking about miracles. Every day I'm, I'm talking about the supernatural manifestation of the power of God in your life. While I'm preaching on the miracles of Jesus, boom, it's like your baby is leaping. And the Lord is saying, you're still going to have that baby. Put that in the chat. You're still going to have that baby. That, that thing, that promise that you're pregnant with is still going to come to pass. It's not like God is not going to do it. The, all the promises of God are yes and amen. God has given you the yes. He's looking for you to say amen. Put in the chat, I say amen to that. God is going to make your baby leap. You ready? All right, now we can get into the word. Oh my God, that was free. That has nothing to do with this miracle, but I just want to slide that in there for free. Y'all ready? All right, Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. I love the word of God. The Bible says, one day, many Jewish religious leaders known as Pharisees along with many religious scholars, came from every village in Galilee, throughout Judea, and even from Jerusalem. And they came to hear Jesus teach. Oh, there's something shady about that. And the power of the Lord surged through him, Jesus, instantly to heal the sick. 
Now, some men came to hear Jesus, uh, uh, but they were carrying a paraplegic man on a stretcher. And they attempted, Jesus was in this place, they attempted to get past the crowd so that they can lay him down in front of Jesus. But because there were so many people crowding the door, they had no way of getting him inside. Say that. Say that they had no way of getting him inside. So they could have left. They said, hey, man, there's no way. No, no. The Bible says, so they crawled onto the roof. And once they got them on the roof, they started to dig their way through the roof tiles. I'm talking about with their hands. They started to break open the roof and they made a hole and they grabbed some rope and they tied it to the man who was on a stretcher, their friend, and they lowered their friend down through the hole in the roof down right in front of Jesus. Verse 20, seeing the demonstration of their faith, Jesus said to the paraplegic man, my friend, your sins are forgiven. The Jewish religious leaders and the religious scholars, they whispered objections among themselves. Who does this man think that he is? Who is this man to speak such blasphemy for me? Only God can forgive sins. Does he think that he is God? Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, why do you argue over what I do? And why do you think that it is blasphemy to say to this man, your sins are forgiven? Now, let me ask you, which one is easier to prove when I say your sins are forgiven or when I say stand up and carry your stretcher and walk? And so which one is easier? I'll tell you what to prove. I'll I, I tell you what. So Jesus turned to the paralytic man, verse 24, to prove to you that everybody here, that I am the son of man. He says, I have lawful authority on the earth to forgive sins. So now I say to you, arise, carry your stretcher and go home. You are healed. And in an instant, say an instant, put that in the chat. In an instant, the man rose right before their eyes. He stood up, he picked up the stretcher. He picked up the thing that was, he started carrying the thing that was carrying him. And he went home giving glory to God with every step that he took. Every step he took, he was giving glory to God. And the people there were seized with astonishment, they were dumbfounded over what they had just went. They was like, did I, are my eyes deceiving me? Did I just see what I think I just saw? And they all praised God, remarking over and over, incredible, what an unbelievable miracle that we have seen today. Now, you know, the religious people were not happy. The religious people were upset. The religious people were like, we didn't come here for all that. See, he did exactly what we thought he was going to do. This is not the kind of stuff that he's supposed to be doing. They were focused focused on the wrong thing. So what does this mean for you today? I could teach on the fact that they were focused on the wrong thing, but I've already done that enough in this series. So we're, we're going to forget those people for today, right? Let's just focus on this man and his friends. What does this mean for you today? Number one, I love preaching y'all. I love it. I love the word of God. All right. Number one, you need people in your camp or in your tribe who can believe God with you when the pressure is on. Put this in the chat. Say, I have faith-filled friends. You need some faith-filled friends. You have to have people around you that are going to believe God with you. You need to have people of like, precious faith. You got to have people that when the pressure is on, they're going to stand in the gap. They're going to set their faith in agreement. You need faith-filled friends. You need people that are going to believe God with you when the pressure is on. Earlier in the series... I made the point when I was teaching about Jesus going to Jairus' house. And once Jesus got word that Jairus' daughter was dead, he said, whoa, the, the enemy has cranked up the pressure on the situation. Now that the pressure is on, Jesus told the crowd, you guys can't come. Now that the pressure is on, Jesus told nine out of his 12 disciples, you guys can't come. He said, when the pressure's on, I just want Peter, James, and John. When the pressure's on, I just I don't need a whole lot of people. I told you before that when the pressure's on, you don't need a lot of people. Your circle needs to be small. Well, yeah, you can have a lot of people. Jesus had the 5,000. Jesus had the 70. Jesus had the 12. But when the pressure was on, shoop, Jesus only had the three. And so you, you need some people around you that are going to believe God with you, and you don't need a whole lot of people. I'm talking about, so this man had some friends. And when the pressure's on, you need some people around you that are in your camp that are going to set their faith in agreement. The man in our text 
today had paraplegia. In the natural, there was nothing that doctors could do. But, but he heard about a miracle worker. Say a miracle worker. He heard about a miracle worker and his name was Jesus. And so he believed, the man with, with, with the paralyzed man, he believed that if he could get into the presence of Jesus, if he could just be laid down right in front of Jesus, that some way, somehow, Jesus was going to heal him and he was going to get up and he was going to walk. But because he was paralyzed, he couldn't get there. Come on now. Sometimes you can't get there and you need some friends to help you get there. He had some friends that were willing to do what he could not do. Let me tell you something. You need some friends around you that when you can't do something, that they are willing to do what you can't do. You need some friends around you that when you can't do something, that are willing to go the extra mile for you. You need some people in your camp that are going to stand in the gap when you can't do it. Come on. You need friends like this. Say, I have friends like this. Put that in the chat. Say it by faith. I have friends like this. You need friends like the friends in the text who refuse to take no for an answer. These friends press through every obstacle to get a breakthrough for this man. Now, pause for a moment. Let me take a pause for a moment. I want you to think about your friends right now. Like right now. Think about your friends. A picture of them. Got it? Now, would your friends do this for you? Just think about it. Would your friends do this? When you're going through something, do you have friends that will go through something with you? Do you have friends that, that will do certain things for you when you can't do it for yourself? Do you have friends who will sacrifice for you? Now, if when I just ask you those questions, you can't think of a few names, I'm talking about not a lot, but you can't think of a couple of names, two, three names. If you can't think of a couple of names, two, three names off the top of your head, it's time to level up your relationships. I, I, in my book, Level Up Your Life, I talk about this. You got to level up. If you can't think of somebody, you need you need somebody. You need to think about, pray about how, who you need in your life because you, you cannot, you were not designed to be a lone ranger. There are no lone rangers in the body of Christ. You need friends and life is better with friends. Say amen to that. Put that in the chat. Say life is better with friends. You need some friends around you and life is better with friends. All right, number two. You need friends who will not stop at the first sign of opposition. Not only do you need friends that are going to believe God, but you need friends who will not stop at the first sign of opposition. Listen, things sometimes are going to get worse before they get better, right? But you need friends who will not stop at the first sign of of, of opposition. Put this in the chat. Say, say my friends don't give up. You got to have people around you that, that are not going to give up, that are not going to cave in, that are not going to quit. You need friends that are going to believe God with you. You need friends that are going to pray with you and stand in the gap. You need friends that are not going to give up, right? At the first sign of opposition. Verse 19, the Bible says, but because there were so many people crowding the door and they had no way to bring them inside, those jokers crawled up on the roof with their friend <laughs> and, and they started to rip out a hole through the, they broke a hole in the roof. They, they made a hole wide enough to let their friends down in front of Jesus. Verse 20 said, seeing the demonstration of their faith, Jesus said to the man, your sins are forgiven. Listen, God never promised you an easy path. Look at me. I would love to tell you that once you're born again, that everything is going to be easy. I would love to tell you that, but if I did, I would be lying. Because the truth is, sometimes being born again, Isabella and I were just having this conversation. Sometimes you being the man of God, the woman of God that God has called you to be, doesn't mean that you're going to have everything you want. It doesn't mean that, that life is going to be easy. It could mean that you have to sacrifice more than you've ever sacrificed in your life. It could mean that being in the center of God's will means you have to give up some things that God tells you to give up. Like I'm saying, God never promised us an easy path. God just promised to, for, to, to provide us the grace to do whatever it is he called us to do from the foundations of the world. There will be times when the Holy Spirit takes you right down a difficult path. That there would be times when the Holy Ghost, the very first thing that, that the Holy Spirit did when Jesus was baptized by his cousin and the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove and, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit, what's the first thing the Holy Spirit did? Led him to go into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan. 
There are times where the Holy Spirit will lead you through difficult situations and paths. But here's the good news. The Holy Ghost led him to go into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan. But the text says when he came out of the wilderness, he came out in the power of the Spirit. Listen, there's some things that you need to go through, face, and overcome so that you can come out in the power of the Spirit. You need. There will be times where you face obstacle after obstacle after obstacle before you get your breakthrough. But the truth is you cannot give up. There are some people that say, Hey, Rick, oh man, you know, I tried that faith thing uh, and faith didn't work. <laughs> no, faith works. Faith, faith works. Every time God speaks, God is faithful over his word to perform it. The problem is whenever I hear somebody say, I tried faith and faith didn't work, I say, well, the truth is faith tried you and you didn't work. You gave up, either you didn't hear from God or you gave up before you, before God manifested it. And so, so it's not that God will never fail. God is not a man. He should lie. Nor the son of man. He should repent. God will never fail. God, God is not, not like us. And so the issue is never with God. If there's a conflict between you and God, newsflash, the problem is you. The problem is never God. Put that in the chat. Say the problem is never God. The, the issue is never God. Faith always works. If God said it, he will not turn his back on his word. The truth is that faith tried you and you gave up too soon. What I love is that when they couldn't get into the house where Jesus was, the friends could have said, hey man, hey buddy, we tried. Like, you know, we, we carried you all the way from the house over here. You know, there's a crowd. We can't get in. You know, let's just try another day. Let's go home and let's just try another day. If they had said that, here's the truth. If they had said that, chances are they, they would have never seen Jesus again. So if they had put in that good college try, hey man, we put in the effort, we tried. Hey man, I tried. It just, you know, it's just, you know, maybe it's just not the will of God. You know, you know, you, you, you just, it didn't work out. So I guess it was not the will of God. It didn't work out. So I guess this just wasn't God's will. No, it was God's will. You just can't give up. Like, like, like sometimes you can't just be like letting go too fast. These brothers say, well, well, if we can't get through the door, we're going through the roof. I mean, like, hey, hey, let me tell you that instead of saying, hey, buddy, we tried. They was like, hey, man, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're going to get you in front of Jesus. I, I tell you what, this man, this Jesus dude, he ain't getting out of here without, without seeing you. I don't care what we got to do, but we're going to get you in front of Jesus. We're going to get you some Jesus today. We're going to get you. Like, look, if we have to stand here, if we have to break through the crowd, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to get you in front of Jesus. They got him up on the roof. They, they broke a hole through the roof. There's going to be, you need friends that are going to stick with you through good and bad, ups and downs, through difficulty and pain. You need people that are going to be there and not give up. God never promised that life was going to be easy. He just promised to be with you every step of the way. And so you know that the grace of God is on you to endure and to overcome. And so if you're facing it, it's because God trusts you with it. God will never allow you to face something that you cannot handle. So if you're facing it, put this in the chat. I can handle it. I can take it. God trust me with it. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Father. If I'm facing it, it's because I have the grace for it. And so put that in the chat. I have the grace for it. I have grace for it. I can do it. I can take it. I can overcome it. Not only that, but I have friends around me that are going to believe God with me. Not, not only does God require grit and determination and resilience and perseverance, but God also requires you to surround yourself with people like that. Not only is God requiring all of that from you, but birds of a feather flock together. There's a reason why eagles don't hang out with chickens. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, no. If you're an eagle, you can't be around chickens. You need people that are like you. You need people of grit and determination and perseverance. You need people that are not going to give up, that are not going to cave in, and that are not going to quit. You need people that, that are going to be there with you through thick and thin. These are the type of people that you need. You need people that are not going to take no for an answer. Let me say this as a warning. There will always be obstacles. Like God gave you a word for your business. God gave you a word for your marriage. God gave you a word for your children. There will always be obstacles. There will always be opposition. The question is, will you accept those obstacles as your final answer? God will allow whatever you allow. God will permit whatever you permit. So if you accept those obstacles as your final answer, and you say, well, I guess it just wasn't the will of God. You're going to get to heaven and find out that you missed out on a lot of stuff that God wanted you to have, but you were too quick to quit. And so as a believer, you can't, unless God says, hey, don't, unless God says no, 
It's not no. And I'm not going to take no as my final answer because God will allow whatever I allow. God will permit whatever I permit. God, you need friends that are going to push you past the no. Let me just say this as before I go to the, the third point. You need friends around you that are going to push you through your no. It doesn't say it in the text, but even if the guy said, hey man, don't worry about it. We could come back another day. These jokes are like, no, we're going to get you in front. You need friends around you that are going to push you past your no. When you want to give up, when you want to cave in, when you want to quit, when you say, you know what? I don't think I could take this anymore. You know, I'm going to file for divorce. You need friends around you that be like, whoa, hey, hold on now. Whoa, hey, hey, let, let's talk about this for a minute. You know, when you say, hey, man, you know, I don't know. I can't, I, I, I'm about to shut down this business. I'm about to quit this job. I'm about, whoa, whoa, hold on for a minute. Hold on. Slow down, Kimosabi. Let's talk for a minute. You need friends around you that are going to help you push through your no, that are going to reinvigorate you to believe God again. Say amen to that. Come on now. I'm talking about refreshing and restoring. All right. And then last point for today, last one for today. Your faith must be visible. Put this in the chat. Say, my faith is visible. You, you, we don't need no, no, no private, like undercover Christians. <laughs> so we don't need no undercover Christians. Your faith must be visible. Faith is an action word. Faith is something you say. Faith is something you do. Faith is a financial seed that you sow based on something that you believe that God revealed to you about your future. And so to truly live by faith, you must believe it on the inside before it will manifest on the outside. And once you believe it on the inside, it's only a matter of time before it manifests on the outside for all the world world to see. You, you are not called to be a Christian undercover. You are called to put your faith on display. Verse 20 says, seeing the demonstration of their faith, Jesus said to the paraplegic man, my friend, your sins are forgiven. Let's focus in on two words, demonstration and their. Demonstration and and there. And so it was the demonstration of their faith. There was a demonstration and it was just more than one person believing God, right? So let's talk about that for a minute. This group of men demonstrated their faith. They put their faith on display. They, th notice that it wasn't just the faith of the paraplegic man. It was the faith in the hearts of them all. Jesus saw their collective faith. Jesus saw that they were in unity. They were on one accord. They were united. They were set. They had set their faith in agreement. They were locked in together. Say together. You need some friends with you that are going to be together with you, that are going to be united with you, that are going to be on the same accord with you. Jesus saw their faith. You need friends who will get in the fight with you. Say amen to that. Listen, I know that we live in a society of skeptics today. People say, oh man, that Christianity. I was talking to somebody yesterday and I was like, yeah, man. And I was like, hey man, I'm praying for you. Oh man, yeah, thank you. I'm not really like a church person, you know. I'm spiritual, but I'm not like a church person, you know. And I'm not really like, you know, the Bible is not my thing, you know. <laughs> and I know that people think like, you know, well, you know, the Bible is just, all these Christians, they just, they, they, they have these high expectations off of some ancient book and stuff like that. You know why they think like that? Because they don't see the demonstration of power. The, the Apostle Paul said, listen, my preaching and teaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom, it's with demonstration and power. People need to be able to see your faith. People need to be able to see what God is doing in your life. They need to see it. They need to see demonstration. It needs to be on display. It, you say, oh, brother. Pena, you don't understand. Uh, my faith is personal. My faith is private. Yeah, but your faith needs to be public too, because God, God said, if you deny me before man, I'm going to deny you before the Father. And so your faith, yes, should be personal, but it should be visible. And so yeah, your faith should be personal, but it should be public. Uh, yeah, people need to be able to see your faith in your life and in the life of your circle, your friends, your tribe. Your faith should be so obvious to people. Everybody that knows me knows that I'm a man of God. I'm not hiding it. I I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. It's like today in 2023, everybody else could come out the closet except for Christians. I, I remember I posted something on LinkedIn and, and about God and somebody said, ooh, this is not the place for you to be. I can't stand when somebody puts something, uh, uh, this is not the forum. If you want to talk about this, go to Facebook. And I was like, oh, okay. And I responded. I said, okay. So if I was un within the LGBTQ community and I, and I talked about my personal beliefs as it relates to that, you wouldn't have the 
audacity to say anything about it. But because I believe in Jesus, you want to say something about it. Immediately, he backtracked. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be disrespectful. Why? Because everybody else's beliefs, some way, somehow, they can be public with what they believe, but we're not supposed to be public with what we believe. But the devil is a liar. Jesus is the Messiah. I believe in Jesus. I believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived the sinless life. He suffered. He bled. He died. He rose again on the third day in fulfillment of the scriptures. He took a, 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 a Uber, like he rode on a cloud up to heaven like an Uber, and he's coming back again in glory to judge the living and the dead. That's what I believe. I respect you. You can believe what you believe, but doggone it, I'm going to believe what I believe, and I'm not ashamed of it. My faith is not, I'm not going to just dwindle my faith. I'm not going to damper my faith because you believe something else. You can say what you believe. I, I'm going to say what I believe, and, and I'm not ashamed, and, and I don't care what repercussions come. God, God is my fence. Now, I'm not one of those people that's going to be disrespectful towards anybody. I'm not, but I'm not no punk either. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm from Brooklyn, y'all. I ain't playing around. And so I believe in Jesus. Sometimes you need people around you that are going to believe God with you in a very public way. And so, so you don't have to go through it alone. Your faith should be personal, but your faith needs to be public. It there needs to be a demonstration of power for all the world to see. If your faith is too private, then you're not being a witness. The Bible says that our life, that we are living letters. Put this in the chat. I am a living letter. A living letter to be read of men. People should be able to look at me and see Jesus. People should be able to look at you and see Jesus. But if you're too private, oh, that's my private stuff, then you're not a witness. We're supposed to be a witness, a walking, talking representation of the power of God on this planet. We are human conduits of the divine. We are conduits of God's love and God's light. Say amen to that. We need to, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. I am not ashamed. You should not be ashamed. Listen, oh, Brother Pena is 2023. You got to understand. No, no, no. I, I, I understand. But the problem is that the people that preach tolerance are the most intolerant towards us. And so just like everybody else's beliefs are, are to be respected, don't be a punk. Your, your beliefs should be respected as well. You, you, you do it in a very respectful way. And you know what? Honestly, I normally don't have any issues because I walk it out. As I close, let me just say this. One of the reasons why I don't think I have an issue uh, um, with my faith, and I never really have a, a problem representing my faith, is because I live it. I, I, I am positive that if, if I was one of those people, when I was in the army, I never had an issue. And in corporate America, I don't have an issue, but because I live it. Let me just say this as I close. If I was one of those people that talked about Jesus, 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 Jesus all day, but then when I go on a trip, I was sleeping with somebody that's not my wife, or I'm talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all day, but then when I go on a trip, everybody sees me drunk at the bar or at some type of strip club or something, then of course, I, they would see me as a hypocrite and I would have no witness. But because my audio matches my video and my video matches my audio, I never have a problem. You, for you to be a witness, you can be public, but you also have to be a man or woman of integrity. Oh man, I just slid that in for free. Put that in the chat. Say, I am a man or a woman of integrity. Now, let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice, man. I'm, this is some good teaching, y'all. Say this over your life. Say, Father, this is a season of refreshing and restoring for me. I am determined to walk in your best in this season. To do so, I surround myself with people of like precious faith. I surround myself with people who will believe you with me. And together, we can do more than we would ever do apart. One can chase a thousand but two can put 10,000 to flight. I walk by faith and I am not alone. I set my faith in agreement with my friends and they do the same with me. Collectively, our faith is on display for all the world to see. We are not ashamed of the gospel. We boldly declare Jesus is Lord. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. I am not alone, and I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name.
Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org if you want my notes and you get the notes for free. Click on the big red subscribe button, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, uh, this was some good teaching. You might need to listen to this again. Get this down in your heart. You need friends like this. You need people that are going to believe God with you. Listen, do me a favor, two things. Leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you, and then share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. I love you. God loves you more. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to know more about our ministry or you would like to partner with us in what we're doing in the Caribbean, being a blessing to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic, then please go to ripministries.org. You'll be able to find out more information there. And if you'd like to make a donation, all the donations are tax deductible in the United States. A few months ago, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to set up a coaching and mentorship program, and Isabella and I set that up. And so now we make ourselves available on three different levels for those that want access to us and to learn things about maximizing your potential, increasing your personal productivity, and fulfilling your life's purpose. If you're interested in that, go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. And then lastly, we have several books and products on rickpina.co. These are products designed to help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have apparel there that will help you represent the grace life. Thank you so much for being a blessing to us. And we pray that our ministry will continue to be a blessing to you.